before I tell you anything about the Bible study, can you see what's different about the clock? Yeah, there's a big pile of bricks in front of it. And can you see what all of this is? That's a big pile of bricks as well. So how many bricks do you think I can stand one on top of the other before they all fall down? Okay, let's go for it and you count. One, see if it, you can see it right into the video. Two, three, still can't see it, can you? Four, I promise there's four. Five, oh look, here you are. Five, six, <laughs> six, seven. Oh no! Seven. I could only get seven bricks one on top of the other. And one, two, three, four. There's only five in front of the clock. But bricks, and bricks having fallen down, and bricks being built up, and what today's Bible story is, well, not all about, but it definitely has something to do with the story. If you've got any bricks, like these ones, not Lego, because you can stick them together, just bricks that have to balance one on top of the other, Go and see if you can build a tower of how many bricks in a minute. Off you go, and then you can come back and hear what that's got to do with the story. Okay, bye. So, what do the bricks and the tower have to do with our story today? Well, you might need to think back a little bit to last week, and you'll remember that Solomon had built a temple but when everybody had had their celebration and gone away, God came to Solomon and said, It's a beautiful temple, but always remember, it's just a pile of bricks, unless you're worshipping and thinking of me while you're in it. So Solomon was very wise. That's what he's known as, Solomon the Wise. But he didn't stay wise all through his life. And in fact, towards the end of his life, he made some really bad decisions. And because of his bad decisions... Jerusalem, where the temple was, was invaded by enemies. And the people who lived in Jerusalem, the Jewish people, many of them were taken away, miles and miles away, and exiled from their home. And guess what? The temple was just a pile of bricks. And it was a pile of bricks for a long, long, long time. Now, the king in a place called Susa, was not a Jewish king, but he did have some Jewish servants. And he had one very particular Jewish servant whose name was Nehemiah. And Nehemiah heard about the terrible state of Jerusalem. Not just the temple, but the whole city was in ruins. The walls had been knocked down. And Nehemiah, even though he hadn't ever necessarily been living, in Jerusalem, it was his home in his heart, and it broke his heart to know that it was in such a terrible state. So he prayed. He said to God, please God, I want to be able to help. Please tell me what I should do. And you know, he got his answer from God because he had to pluck up his courage to go and see the king. Now, how would he get to see the king? Well, here's the interesting part. Nehemiah wasn't just any old servant. Nehemiah was what's called the king's cupbearer. Does exactly what it says on the tin. He used to bring the cup of wine to the king at night time. So he had a perfect chance to talk to the king. You would think that's all fine. But actually in those days, very difficult to know whether it was going to be all right to say anything to a king. Because nowadays we've got a queen, haven't we? And I don't think we have ever heard our queen say, off with his head. I don't think I've ever heard that. I've heard the Queen of Hearts say that in a Disney film, but I've never heard our queen saying it. And it would be terrible. She would never say a thing like that. But in those days, kings were forever saying things like that. Off with his head, take him to the tower, put him in the dungeons. Oh, they just had so much power and they really weren't very good at looking after people sometimes. So Nehemiah was very scared when the feeling and the message that he got from God was that he was to go and ask the king for help. 
So one night he was about to take the cup into the king. And of course, what did he do first? He prayed. So he had prayed to find out what God wanted him to do. Now he prayed to God to keep him safe. He said, God, I'm going to go and I'm going to talk to the king, but I'm going to need you to keep me safe because we both know what could happen to my head if I get the king in a bad mood. So that's what Nehemiah did. He came up to the king and he had a really, really, really sad face. He didn't say anything. He just looked sad. Well, this particular king wasn't particularly that bad. So he looked at Nehemiah and he thought, that's awful. Nehemiah is usually cheery and happy, but that can be wrong. So he said to Nehemiah, what's troubling you? Now, in those days, once the king had spoken to you, you could talk back. So Nehemiah had his perfect opportunity. So the first thing he did in his head was say, thank you, God. And then he said, well, king, I have heard that the place where my people come from, Jerusalem, is lying in ruins. And it breaks my heart to think that it's like that. And really, I would love to be able to do something to fix it. Well, said the king, how do you think you could fix it? Nehemiah sent up a very quick prayer to God saying, give me the right words, give me the right words. And so he said, well, king, what would really help would be if I could go back to Jerusalem and oversee the building of new walls. And maybe then I could build the temple and we could build back Jerusalem. And well, I don't know how I would do it because, well, I, I'm just a poor man serving you. Well, said the king, how would it help you if I gave you a scroll that said you were going about the king's business and you travelled back to Jerusalem? Because if you had that scroll, that would keep you safe all the way back to Jerusalem from where you are now. And might it help if I gave you some donkeys and some workers to go with you? Nehemiah couldn't believe it. That's what you call an answer to prayer. Absolutely answered prayer, just like that. So Nehemiah said, oh, king and masters, that would be wonderful. So the very next day, Nehemiah set off with his scroll that was going to keep him safe and some workers and some donkeys and off he set for Jerusalem. When he got there, oh my goodness, what a mess were the walls. So he rolled up his sleeves, ready to start building, but then he prayed. He said, God, this is a huge, huge task. and I'm not going to be able to do it on my own. And I'm not even going to be able to do it on my own with these workers and these donkeys. I can only do it if you help me, God, and give me the strength to be a good manager of all these people and get these bricks and walls up. And you know, God answered that prayer too. So the walls began to get built up all around the city of Jerusalem. Now, in those days, it was very important to have a really good wall round your city because if people could get in to your city just like they had before they could invade your city and take it over so nehemiah worked day and night to build back up these wonderful walls now not everybody was pleased to see him some people came and stood on this side of the wall and shouted up at him that's a stupid thing to be doing you're not going to be able to build that up properly. You'll just be invaded again. And they just got really, really annoying. Now, Nehemiah could have got, been up on the top of the wall shouting back at them or even worse, fighting them. But he didn't do that. He said, God, I'm praying to you again. Please give me the right words. So he spoke to the people and said, we're going to go on working night and day. But while people are building the bricks, I am going to put soldiers there as well who will watch over the workers and keep them safe. So you might be shouting on your side of the wall, but we're going to be kept safe 
here on the wall and behind the wall. And from then on, he worked and worked and worked. And I think even maybe the people on this side of the wall began to see that Nehemiah had a really strong faith in God helping him. Because Nehemiah always talked about God, always told the people that he was doing God's work and God had told him what he had to do. And so eventually, the very last brick on the very last bit of the wall was finished. And Nehemiah then did something else. At that point, Nehemiah prayed to God again. And this time, he said, thank you. Thank you, God, for being with me the whole time I was building this and all the workers were helping. Thank you for the strength to be able to carry on. Thank you for the wisdom that you gave me on how to build this wall. Thank you for always being with me. And Lord, our next thing that we're going to do, we're going to build the temple. And that's what he did. But that's next week's story. Bye for now. Now, before we go away, I think if Nehemiah could pray and pray and pray, don't you think we can? So let's close our eyes and let's say some thank yous and some pleases and maybe even some sorries to God. And that's one way of being sure that you've said all the things that you want to to God. If you think of thank you, sorry, please. So let's do that. Close your eyes. Thank you, God, for our wonderful world that we live in. Thank you that it's wonderful because you're in it every day and everywhere. Sorry, God. Sorry that sometimes we maybe get cross. Sorry that sometimes we forget to say thank you to you. Sorry that sometimes we're maybe unkind to others. Help us to look at other people with love and to be kind. Please, Lord, there are so many people that we know who are maybe sad or ill or lonely. Lord, we don't know them all, but you do. Please, Lord, let them know that you love them. Please be but with them and give them your love and your strength and your wisdom, just like you gave Nehemiah. We ask all this because we know that you loved us so much, you gave us Jesus, your son, to save us all. Amen.